yeah, yeah. Wazi Circus Radio. Welcome back, you guys. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by WaziCircus.com, home of Galactatrack art prints and apparel and comfortable, affordable skydiving suits. We're also brought to you by LearnToSkydiveAustin.com, where we combine cutting-edge technology <laughs> and over a decade of experience to produce world-class flyers. Yeah. Today's guest is somebody very, very, very special to me. Uh, life coach, extraordinaire, entrepreneur, hypnotherapist, Ali Martin, son. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Allie. How's it going, Mom? Hey, it's going great. Oh, I'm so Good happy to see you. See you. Look at that smile, son. <laughs> Killing it. <laughs> What's going down? Oh, just another day hanging out. Just another day hanging, hanging out, out in the world, yeah. making it go round, making the sunshine. You know, watch the rotation. Yeah, <laughs> it's all about the rotation. Huh? Yo, so I met you in the lobby of where I work. Um, you don't remember this because we were talking about it the other night. But when we met, you said your name was Allie, and I go like Ally. And you go, yeah, I like that. I was like, yeah. And then I walked off, and that was how we met. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, That's awesome. I know you don't. But so you glad you did. You were my ally from then <laughs> on. <laughs> right? Ali's the type of person that you meet in life, and they help you get your shit together. And they put it in order and digitize it and open a website. <laughs> 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 and then create some sales for you and put you in meetings with people. You help me step up my game. You help me mature as somebody trying to make some money on by not being employed, <laughs> right? Like going out on my own. Um, I've always had the hustle down. I've always had the get it done, but I never really had the professional side, like, you know, at all. And you show me I could do it, and you believed in me, and now I'm kicking ass in the world. Thank you, Allie. Yeah, worth yeah, it. That's your introduction, sir. <laughs> Run with it. <laughs> That's awesome. That was Thank the nicest you know thing anyone's ever said. Yeah, yeah. Ever. Right on. So, so what drives you to change people's lives? Everybody you touch, everybody that runs into you. Like, talk to Allie, the regular thing you hear all the time. Like, oh, really? Oh, you got to, oh, talk to Allie. Allie, awesome. Allie will fix that shit. Yeah. Allie will show you how to do that, you know? I can build websites, so. You can build websites. <laughs> it's a great way to start a conversation. Well, well what are websites built on? The websites are built, well you, you can take dreams and articulate them to websites is what you do. That's true. Right. Well, I like to pick out what makes people really passionate. Um, mm -hmm. Why do you get up out of bed? Why do you do what you do? Does it matter? Um, <laughs> what is that? Is that a closing? The elevator. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's what good. that meant. That's what that hand signal meant. Still working on my mic skills. I've always been behind a drum yes, set. Son. Um, yeah, I, really I like to see what makes people excited because we get so used to doing the same thing. We're taught to go to school and get a job and be employed <coughs> and... Uh, do what we're told, follow the rules, and follow the steps. Knock out your check marks, get your uh, bonus points for doing a little bit extra work on the side. Uh, but that's just not as much fun as I think life is, and that that's happening for a lot of people, and it's not seen on a on scale. So, so somebody that like you that didn't realize how awesome they were for a second, you know, well you I forget. Do. You forget, but well. you forget <laughs> what you're actually capable of. Right, well, yeah. You and forget nobody, what you're capable of. That's yeah. the truth. You do have those moments where, like, I can take on the world, and then that the excitement fades, right? And without the excitement, you might not have the motivation, and then you might think, oh, it's not for me, you know, or maybe I can't do that, it's, you know, but why not, man? Yeah. You know? Well, if you start comparing it to anything else, too, that's where you set your bar. But yeah. So if you look Correct. up to something, you have this crazy bar right. when you're not even supposed to be doing the same thing. You're supposed to be doing your, your thing because thing. nobody else can do that better than you. Exactly. So sometimes somebody just needs to say that before they're like, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. she's right. Fuck. Yeah. I need that shit. You know, truth telling. Truth telling. Yeah. So um, to help me get my stuff in order, we would meet at a local bar or like pub, bistro, sports bar thing called Cover 2. Really rad. Shout out to Cover 2. They take care of me. Um, and we would powwow in the corner. And we'd really powwow. And trust me, working with me is not that easy. So she had a hammer and anvil and had to pound out. Uh, just my messiness uh, with what my dreams and focuses were. Like, if it was up to me, I'd be doing 20 things. I think I've whittled it down to 10 all at the same time. 
Thank yeah. you. Well, because you combine yeah. a lot of it too. Yeah, like, I did. Oh, yeah. I'll hey, why don't you just do that? Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. Sometimes the obvious is in front of your face, and if somebody doesn't point it out to you, you're like, I would have never seen that. We new perspectives can't ever hurt. Right. So. That's true. Even if they are hurtful. <laughs> they <g> <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's <laughs> they the truth. Still, yeah, right. They can still <laughs> build. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. In your experiences with people, because we have a lot of friends that are some motivated, some not, some that have everybody has talents they could um, they could go reach for, but not everybody's doing. And some people are just walking around complaining a lot. What what what's the difference? Well, everybody and like and just just in circles that we walk in, like right, what yeah. what separates the whiners from the winners? Well, it's walking a track versus a marathon, you know. Um, but everybody has the potential. Everybody can move, mm -hmm. so. The potential is there. It's just a matter of what makes somebody do something versus not doing something. I think well, you nailed it? it. I think it's choosing which which uh, walk are you going to do. Are you going to go walk around the track, or are you going to are you going to go somewhere? Are you going right. to get on? You know, are you doing the five k or just a few laps around the right. same circle? So um, it's about looking at things differently and constantly talking to different people that are doing things that you're that you admire, whether it has to do with what you're doing or not. I think just constantly right. looking towards what are people doing that I find really cool. And uh, uh, putting more of that into your life, right. one way or another, whether it comes to meeting them or a lot of my mentors I've never met, I just look up to in a way that I just want to soak in their being. Right, right, watching right. Watching interviews right, and right, you know right, keynotes, okay. just there are little things about different people that anybody can relate with. So you find those little key things and you keep searching, and find what what gets you excited. So I want to say that you introduced me to mentorships. Um, I had a friend. Who was it? Who was it? I think it was English, whatever his real name is, Van English. Shout out to you, double O agent Van, whatever your name is, dog. Uh, but he was telling me he had a mentor, and like you know, it really changed his life, and he bounced ideas off of him. He, and I thought, I was like, oh, I want to get a mentor. And I think I had, like you just mentioned, I had to find my own mentors in the world until you introduced me to real mentors, like people that you could actually look up to and listen to and learn from, and. Um, there's a group called Friends of Peter that we've been uh, blessed to be able to attend and meet just amazing people from all walks of life, high caliber people. And we get to meet up with these people for lunch and just talk and they give you insight. And it's really cool. It was life changing for me being a, though I'm old now, but like kind of a young black guy trying to enter this corporate world that I do not feel comfortable in. Um, I was able to stand up and speak to people and they understood me. I was used to like, you know, I'm used to writing songs and rapping, but I'm not really used to like public speaking in that way, you know? And doing that in front of them and telling deep stuff about yourself to some strangers in a cafe, right? Yeah, it's a, the speaking bit's a big one. It's yeah. big, right? And then you got me into this other group. Uh, it was, uh, they'd meet over breakfast for business. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. You know? Nailed it. Uh, and I learned a lot there, too. I learned a lot there, too. There were a lot of really powerful people in that room, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, and from then, you know, I've, I've developed to here. Like, you push me leaps and bounds from making, hey, I would like to do that one day, to, yo, we're doing this right now, and we've got it booked out through, like, two months out of guests coming. So it's, it's, it's a train, right? And it's, it's all because of people like you that help push people behind the scenes. I'm a pusher. You're a pusher. Push people. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're <laughs> <laughs> what movie is that? <laughs> I love to quote it, I have no idea where it's from. I push people. I'm a pusher, <laughs> that's amazing. That's a, that's a quote. I have a bit about tri <laughs> tripping old ladies o in my show. <laughs> I don't think that's funny. I think it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. So tripping on yeah, ladies? No, have you ever tried to trip an old lady? Oh. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm not. I've not tried that. Well, it's tough because there's some resilient old ladies. Yeah, it's it's better on stage. Resilient? Resilient. Well, resilient old yeah. ladies. It's hard to get a grip on the cankles. All right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even watch it. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm leaving. <laughs> Drop the mic, son. <laughs> the fool's crazy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what up? what's up with... Um, you take local artists and put them on a platform, get their music out, you help them promote. Man, you've introduced me to so many artists. Like uh, I don't even know where to start. What was the uh what was the art what was the festival we went to? The the, the with your girls with the paintings. Oh 
Oh man, that was a uh, raw, raw, the raw, raw event. Raw, event yeah. raw, shout out to Raw, hooking artists up all yeah. over the country, yep. right? And then what was what? What do you in t- talk to me? Alex. Yeah, yeah. What's cool. the deal? So art wise, which has always been an artist of some kind, right. um, artist and entrepreneur. So I uh, got in trouble for s- at school for uh, selling slap bracelets for quarters. I got to eat a lot out of the candy machine hustling yeah yeah started early but um i would write uh names on with bubble letters on pieces of paper notebook paper and uh, sell them for a quarter too so more yeah you know that that started in the first second grade something maybe even kindergarten um so that's where it began (laughs) really i think (laughs) but there's just something something out of nothing player well bringing up Doing any kind of art really brings people together, and artists are attracted to other artists, and artists are usually really cool people. So, um, that is dope. So she would tag your name in bubble letters, like, "Yo, Ethan." Yeah, hey, yeah, bu- big bubble. Let- yeah, did the shading. Yeah, you know, for real. Like a, a backdrop yeah, and nice. everything. Yeah, the balloon and shit. Gra- yeah, yeah, it was hype. You know, That's what's up? Uh, of course, there are a lot I of like those. There are a lot of what's up. Right, that on. <laughs> that year. Yeah, yeah. that on. Uh, <laughs> Before the two thousands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you were saying. <laughs> so I don't know. We're talking about art. Yeah, bringing, yeah. Um, bringing bringing people together. So the yeah, d- but um, how do you help promote local artists? Well, that probably started. Um, girl named uh, Lee Don Hershey goes by now. It used to be Felicia Hershey back in the day when we were doing Girls with Flair. Now, taken off. Um, brought me a company called Girls with Flair. She brought me this uh, club, basically, and then we turned it into a company really fast. Mm-hmm. And um, that that experience was bringing in a lot of potential artists as well as up and coming in the Austin area. And we'd fly in bigger headliners to try to boost their visibility as well and help them out. And so we kind of turned into talent agents, talent scouts and agents. And we kind of, okay. that was the form of the company. Then we did event production on the side. So th- I just fell in love. I had no <laughs> idea how much I was going to enjoy that. So right. it, it was a backyard conversation over a fence because we were neighbors. Um, started with building a website. So everything <laughs> starts everything a website. Everything starts a website <laughs> these days, you know. <laughs> but it's crazy how a conversation with somebody can lead to yeah. amazing. And you never know who you're talking to. Yeah. That's you true. never know who you're talking to and how they can help you. So Girls with Flair, is it still, is it still around? Or it's yeah, it's in L.A. now. So oh, it's okay. Yeah. I remember, I, w- I knew you when she moved, right? Yeah. Uh, um, I don't think so. That no? was before I fly. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so that's been going for a few years. I've been out of that for a few years and still did a little bit of production on the side. And mm-hmm. still, I just fell in love with working one-on-one with artists. So then I s- got my... Yeah. Life coach certification. It's like, okay, oh, what find is a way that? to mix this together. What is a I life know, I coach? I really don't like that title. What is a life but, coach um, certification? I like right? Coach. Hold on, when I hear that shit, I'm like, dog, my You're life's like, fine, uh, dog. Yeah. I don't need a life <laughs> coach. <laughs> no. <What? laughs> like, what are you going to coach me on? I you know, but then, but then when you sit down with somebody who really has, you know, a, a, an outline that they can apply your life to and fix yeah. some stuff, then you're like, oh, a life coach. It is well, a bad. It's more so just being a good questioner it because sounds, you it don't. Nobody has arrogant. the best idea for you, though. Well, it's it's uh, not about having the answer. It's about having the question because uh. truth comes from the creator. So I can't give you the answer. Life I can therapist. maybe throw some ideas at you that'll s- that'll spark a and something else that's already in you, but it has to come from within you. So. That's being a good questioner, being able to pull those good ideas out of somebody is mm-hmm. a true skill in coaching. Uh, it's more therapy, coaching, isn't it? It's, yeah, well, you know, every Same thing, everything's yeah. a form of therapy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wrong I'm feeling good right now. <laughs> right, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, so what, okay, okay, I wake up one day and I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to be a life coach. Yeah. What do I do? Where do I go to do that? How do I become a life coach? Um, I just did like a certification course. Like, like where did you find that weekend. at? I Googled it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd already been, uh, I'm sure you'll tell the hypnotherapist. Yeah, the hypnotherapist. Story. Yeah, we're going there next. But uh, <laughs> the, that's what I was doing before, so it was a nice, uh, it was an easy segue. You were doing what before? Uh, hypnotherapy. So, yeah, past life For regression. Yeah. Past, past life regression. Yeah, hypnotherapy. On the real. Yeah, and then the uh, and that's deeper the question. level. So you just dig and dig into the so super yeah. uncomfortable and crying. 
That's <laughs> terrible. No, it's actually it's it's like walking through a dream, and I'm holding your hand. So. Oh, Jesus, is um, that dream a nightmare most of the time, and that's why it's bothering them? No, well, them? if it's a nightmare, it's like, okay, well, you don't have to feel the pain right now. You understand that you're yeah, not in it, and you're viewing course. it from a different. Don't, uh, don't hypnotize so me right now. So it's never a. <laughs> I saw you. Yeah. I saw the eyes. You know what I'm saying? The hypnotherapist. <laughs> <laughs> so this. So um, when I originally got originally got to Langston University, um, I was studying child psychology. I thought that was where I could I would help kids out somehow, right? I had this weird idea in my head, until like it was my first or second semester, I realized I would have to listen to the worst traumatic shit in the world, and like I would slay, I would kill. I'd be like the Dexter of child psychologists, so I decided to go into biology instead. <laughs> yeah, because I just couldn't yeah. do it. That's a lot of weight. Dude, that's what you do. It's you listen to all my shit. Because like our conversations aren't pure business. I'd probably bore you with an hour of talking to get like five minutes of work done. You're easy. <laughs> 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 uh, so how well, that was definitely a big part of it, though. Um, hearing those horror stories was a regular thing, but that's right. that's the core of so many problems in current life right now. Is you're holding on to this crap that you went through as a kid, or even a few years ago that maybe you never talked about because then you'd be talking about it, and that's not that's fun. not cool. You don't even want to think about some yeah, crap. Right, right, so. Right. so what do you do with all this pain you absorb? What do you do with all the pain you absorb? I try not to absorb it. <laughs> well, so you're, so you're waiting around <laughs> in it, son. <laughs> you know, you're filling uh, the room up with it. You well know, I, just, I see things really neutrally, and right. I can't. There, to me, there is no such thing as evil because I've seen uh, the the best and worst of humankind. I feel right. like and experience that. And uh -huh. if I can, if I can see the worst of humankind is not true evil, but a state of mind and a lot of mental illness. Or a that's state or whatever it is, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Then, um, then it'd be a lot harder mm. to deal. It's easy it. to label something evil and not dig into it. It's yeah. easy because that evil writes it off at that moment. Yep. Instead of being, no, it's a mental condition. There's a lot of mental health issues that's, that's going on. Yeah, it's a and big it's thing. And it's all repressed. It's all. It's not all. Of course, there are physical, physiological um, abnormalities sometimes, but a lot of it is past traumas. PTSD that are affecting you as an adult. Is that true? Yeah, even little quirks, you know, and some sometimes the most talented people that are making the greatest things happen in the world are doing Suffering. it because they went through so much uh, before and mm -hmm. they have taken that and used it towards a superpower versus a right. uh, crippling mechanism. You know, we it's yeah. easy to say, oh, I don't, I don't want to do this because I'm tired because blah, blah, blah. You know, no, I know. Ex insert excuse here. Insert yeah. excuse there. And uh, it's good to take a break and chill and then but figure out what you really want to do. How do you want to make a difference? Because if you're right. not helping make the w at least s something a little bit better, whether it be somebody else's life by just smiling at them every now and then. Like That's huge. What are, you, what are you doing to make your environment better around you? And I think the best way to do that is be really nice to people. And Kindness. And the more you can help be them, kind. actually, the more fulfilled you get. So you end up being a lot happier because you're helping other people. 100%. Be fulfilled. 100%. And whenever you have a negative attitude and somebody just says something nice to you, it breaks it like a spell. Right? It's just a state of mind you're in that just you could change your state of mind. You just got to be <laughs> cognizant of it. But sometimes it feels good to wallow in that negativity. You yeah. But you don't really want to do it, but you're there. You're yeah. grinding it, and you're just in your then thoughts. somebody's like, hey, I like how you did your eyebrows. I'm like, oh, oh shit. I spent like 30 minutes with the tweezer today. I'm so glad you noticed. Wow. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of my mentors is this uh, lady named Joyce Meyer. Uh, she's a minister. I don't really listen to her for the religious stuff, but as much as the teachings, right? She is, oh man, she blows me away. And she has a book called The Battlefield of the Mind. And she, how your thoughts control everything. So if you're sitting around having negative thoughts and you think you're going to be nice to somebody, it's not going to work. And you got to recognize when you're thinking negatively or your thoughts aren't going to be productive, stop them and then go the other route. And the more you train yourself on that, you'll just avoid negativity. Another author um, I love named Ogmandino, the book is called The Greatest Salesman, I believe. Uh, he says to avoid negativity and failure like pain. Like, like somebody sticking you with a pin. So if somebody, yeah. And I, I developed that. I hear negativity. It just makes me feel ill. Like negative, and then I do it. And I really feel like shit when I do it, right? Because it's just, it's just a n negative energy is, is a crippling, sickening thing. And grumbling and complaining and whining without trying to change. Because if you're in the action of making yourself better and changing, you can complain, but it'll be a different complaint. 
like this thing's killing me. It's just so hard. I'm gonna get through this. Not, I hate this. This sucks. There's two different complaints. So yeah. the other one's not really that complaining. It's more so of an observation. Break it down. Break yeah. down, figure out what is it that's annoying you. you right, know? and fix that. And figure it out, you know. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Do something. Everybody has their own tactics. But and but another thing out of that book, just real quick I want to drop. Um, Og said, before you speak to anyone, tell them I love you in your heart silently. Silently. You don't have to say it, but the way you speak to them will change immediately. Right? You yeah, just say, I love you as a person. I, not, I don't care what you look like or who you are. And within that, they'll be defenseless against you. No matter how they see you as some tatted up guy, they might think I'm a gang banger. Who knows? I'm just, gangs aren't even around anymore. That's how old I am. But like, you know, whatever. Um, I can get past that just by telling them I love them and speaking to them like a human being. They know I'm speaking directly to them and not their wall. And then their walls come down and they love me too. And that's how, you know, just be kind to people. Your wall um, metaphor you were talking about the other day was perfect, and I've thought about that the last that few days. It's really got me. The um, when somebody's talking to you and they go up to talk to somebody, they have their wall up. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh well, I don't want to talk to the wall. I want right. to talk to you, so I'll just come back later. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. You're still cool. You're still cool. You're but just, yeah. Your wall is talking for you. Yeah, and, yeah. And that's fine. That's I don't fine if you talk want to be your there. secretary. But, uh, you know, your representative. Yeah. And your that's representative comes out to me like, yeah. oh. Like, no, you know, get out of uh, here. Uh, that's fine. Well, well, I'll check back. Yeah, I'll, t- I'll come back later. No worries. Yeah, you're not threatened. <laughs> Let's go to lunch. Yeah. You know? Get out of the office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the office. Let's not go there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's, what's, what's next on the horizon for uh, Ali? Um, next on the horizon is... I'm putting a lot more focus into music lately mm-hmm. and getting back into music videos because I went to film school right. mm, almost a decade ago. And How the time flies. I say I went. I really stopped by. I didn't stay for very long at all. I brushed. <laughs> I brushed by. Um, yeah, I, well, I did film all growing up, and then I went mm-hmm. to school and, um, and ha- then – have touched it on and off since then but this since i've been doing music again it's just really lit up this fire so right. um i don't know how much longer i'm going to be doing it but that's what i'm excited about right, right now, now so right right i'm going to see where that takes off that's the next few months or so but um that's probably big you know raul yeah he's valley joe he's still right. around he's like awesome if you want to i mean you should yeah, link up and go run around with him shoot some video get some footage yeah. learn how to edit a little bit you know yeah. That's what you're into. No, that was my stuff that I did for many years. Yeah. yeah that's Raul's really right. cool. I was thinking about him the other day, too. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, yeah. He's on the show. He's on the, on the show. So that's awesome. So he helped me shoot that commercial for that marina. Yeah. You remember that? Have you remember seeing that? Super yeah. awesome, man. Super awesome footage. Shout out to Ra- Raul Valley Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we were going to start that mentorship type thing where we were going to meet and, and discuss ideas of entrepreneurs in the buildings, right? Um, and never really get off the ground, but everybody kind of went off on their, you know, Rafa, have you heard about his company, Diatonics? Yeah. He's kicking ass. He's kicking ass. He sells the pet uh, rescue kit on Amazon. Oh, that's awesome. And we had him on the other day, and he is kicking ass on his sales, right? Um, another friend of ours started his trash company, but it's, it's working, the VIP, what is it, VIP... Valet Trash, I think it's Valet Trash or yeah. something. So they pick your trash up. Yeah, Greg. Yeah, Greg. Greg Levin, kicking ass. Yeah. So the so you just know. put it out there, and I guess it just took off on its own. Uh, and it's something about that locker room. <laughs> I'm gonna say it over and over, man. <laughs> Any ideas in that locker room come to fruition? Because we got time to work on them. <laughs> yeah, you do. You know, we got time to work on them. Um, you've kind of taken over um, future. Uh, what design for iFly? Um. That's funny that you say that. I've, I've pitched for my title to have design in it, but it's just not going to happen. So not going <laughs> to give you design? <laughs> no, I just keep doing design stuff. Uh, and uh, I like just games and theory by my name, but nobody... Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, it's been awesome working uh, on the operations team. Yeah, uh, yeah. Full scale, looking at things with a bigger picture with the company because it's moving really fast. Really fast. Really fast. It's growing really fast. And there are a lot yeah. of really cool people coming in. Right. And new people it's every day, man. Yeah. We find a lot it of It is people. almost every day somebody new. And it's just, it's a fun roller coaster to be on right now. We're right. just having a ball, and I work with some of the coolest people. Are uh, you going any international routes? With what? With, 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 with I mean, uh, you know, Patrick Fremel's I mean, in China, oh yeah. and he's going to need help with design out there. I mean, right. Well, I mean, I'm not actually, let's see, 
it's it's not officially in my job. Yeah, I don't know. That's I'm just kind of making it up as it's I go. What you anyway. do? I know yeah. I like your design. position well, didn't even exist that you got now. Well, I need I need there to be good design. So whether it's me doing it or right. somebody else, it right. just needs to happen. So I'm happy to make it happen if it's not going to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick it up. All right. We're right. thin. Somebody's got to write it down. Yeah. But um, that's something we we discussed. Um. We're the type of people that see a good idea and, and feel like an obligation to make it happen. But we can't do every good idea there is. No. Yeah. You know, and I know you're in the atmosphere where there's a lot that needs to happen. Right. How, how do you deal with that? Like, I know it's easy yeah. to get overloaded, you know. So I just work with people that are like you that are having these awesome ideas and wanting oh to do something you. with it. Right. And I get excited about you getting excited about a really yeah. cool idea. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I want to. S- I want to see that happen in the world. So right. Right. I want to figure out how to help. You know, even if it's just chatting, having a great conversation, and maybe maybe you have some inspiration. Right. Right. But S- just more of those conversations. So um, instead of trying to do a million different things, I'm learning a lot as well too. Learning that uh, prob- retail might not be my thing. Long good. Time. <laughs> I had wanted to, to open a, a VR arcade at one point. Uh huh. I was about to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. And yeah. uh, I don't I have any interest in running a retail business. But you don't know until you try it. Yeah, so and that's I've been doing that, that with iFly and now know. I know. <laughs> See, cause I didn't know that I wasn't a roofer. What a roofer. A roofer. Yeah. Until I tried it. I was like, shit, this ain't for me. Okay, different kind of heights. Yeah, well yeah. no, not even the heights. The sun and the tile and it's a hard it's hard work. Well, uh, I mean, instead of standing on a roof, you just needed to jump from a plane to get I think that's what it was. See, I mean, I had you're, to you're on the right track. I had know? to figure out what I wasn't to figure out what I was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was The roofer thing is just a joke. But I thought I was going to be a restaurant manager. <laughs> I really thought I was a restaurant manager. I, at the time, I believed that. And, you know, I'm not that. Once I started doing it, I was like, oh, I'm not a restaurant manager at all. <laughs> <laughs> not even a little bit. But you could. Hey, I and once that's the thing. thought I wanted to be in management at iFly. And I uh, moved up, and I had the keys, and I was all, I was like, this fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I want to get back in the wind. I don't yeah. want to do all this paperwork and emails. But I didn't know. I always thought I wanted to move up this corporate ladder that, yeah. like, the, the check marks, like you said, right? Because, like, there's only, yeah. a w- you know, there's a one path kind of laid out for people. And I was trying to trudge along. I never really had. Like, uh, when I became a skydiver and went that route, there is no corporate path. You decide who you are and what you're going to be. Nobody says, hey, there's a cameraman. You become a cameraman and then they hire you. It's different. You don't apply for anything. Right. You are this thing, and that's what you're getting paid for. So I was in that world for a while, and then getting hired at iFly was the corporate side for me that I am not used to. I've gotten in trouble for a lot of emails. I've gotten in trouble <laughs> for all kind of stuff, man. And I don't mean it. I have no you know, malice. Yeah, yeah. I just am who I am and I don't translate well in email form. <laughs> you know? Right. It it man, it's been a it's been a tough journey. Well I think also you said knowing what you are by knowing what you're not right. is is a really black and white way to look at it too. And right. you can also see it as it's all part of the ride because you're gonna learn something in the process. Right. So you do right. something to because we're not meant to be one thing. It's right. all we're just playing around. We're just playing this life. So we're just going through the different things. It's there's not an end all thing. There's not one thing, thing that we're do. supposed to be forever. Right. Yeah, maybe the Dalai Lama. He's you know, well, probably well if just there was that everybody would do that one <laughs> thing. That'd be the purpose of life. So there'd be no difference. Everybody would do that thing. If that was the point, if there wasn't, you know, that's the thing about free will. Because if there was one way. Everybody do that same thing with no point in life. Everybody dressed that one way. They'd all do that one thing, you know, but that's not the way it goes. And even if you're doing that, even if everybody's different, but (laughs) you do your one thing and that's it forever and you're not growing and you're not changing. (laughs) Right. Not challenging yourself. You're the comfort. Uh, uh, Comfort is a prison, right? And it's, yeah. I I mean, it feels good sometimes. (laughs) But that's a prison. I don't want (laughs) to get up. Now you're stuck, you know, like, I I don't know. I, I keep that in my mind. Uh, so, like, back to the knowing yourself, I knew, I thought I wanted to, to be in management until I did it. Then I realized that that's not my spot. So then that allowed me to allow other people to do it and move up and not be resentful, right? Because I tried it, and I was like, it's not for me, right? If you want to do it, you can go do it. B- where before, it was like, oh, they got promoted, and I didn't get promoted. All that grumbling stuff could have right. happened. Well, it's about the power, too. It feels good to move up. It feels good to be have not more responsibility. Really, the th- not okay, really. That let me is rephrase. a farce. The idea that is of a, having yeah. more responsibility <laughs> and being looked up to by, uh, by others or having the Nobody title. Nobody looks up to you. Everybody I mean, hates you. 
Yeah, well, but it's it's that it's that idea. It's that fantasy. Yeah, it's that, it's that, that, fantasy that everybody that chases at some yeah. level. You know what? It sounds yeah. good outside of work. <laughs> right? Yeah. Until so you, so you walk in the door. Until you're in the door and <laughs> everybody like scatters like roaches. When they oh, see man. You. you sound like a terrible manager. Uh, 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 no, not me. I'm <laughs> <laughs> not my management skill. <laughs> I was. I had fun. My people had fun. I was, you know, in general. Yeah. Well, if everybody had fun, then there wouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Not to, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. But you know, but finding out who you are and what your path is is pretty rad. And when you get in your zone and you find your niche and you're kind of cruising, like to ask somebody what's next, you're like, man, I just want I'm cruising. That's what that's what Dusty said. I was like, yeah, he's found his. You know, he's cruising. Yeah. He's found his niche. I'm kind of in my niche. I'm skydiving. I'm at the tunnel. It's everything's perfect. You know, mm-hmm. um, I don't want to move up, and that's a good, pl- f- good feeling to have. You know, well, I don't re- want anything more. That's being just really honest. That's yeah. being really honest about what you like right. and what you want, because that's the hardest thing to do. That's kind of step one. Be really yeah. honest about what are your, what are you interested in. It doesn't right. have to be your end all passion. Like not what are you meant to right. be, do anything. Like and what do you well, letting the financial side go. And yeah. letting it, letting letting money be a byproduct of you doing the best at something you love, is kind of where it's at. So uh, people get frustrated. I'll, s- I'll say with the indoor skydiving industry because like the money, the money, the money. But like if you're there for the money, you're in the wrong spot. You can sell cars across the street and make money, right? Mm-hmm. You've got to be here because you love what you're doing. And if you do, you'll make money doing it, right? And if you let go of the money aspect, it'll free you up to do what you really want to do, mm-hmm. regardless if you're getting paid. I don't know if anybody's going to watch this. Nobody's seen anything yet, right? <laughs> they could get, like, one like, and they just move on. It's a long show, right? You know, so, like, I, who cares? I'm doing it because it's awesome, and it's fun, and maybe something will happen, right? And that's with a lot of things. Um, you got to try. Not everything works. A lot of things do work. A lot of things work, and when they start going, you figure out, I don't want to do this. Right? Like the retail thing. Like, oh, it'd be cool if I had that. I could run this. And you start running. You're like, oh, this is a nightmare. <laughs> 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 right? Especially when it's growing. It starts getting successful. There's more money. And people want more stuff. And it's like, whoa, hold on, hold on. Right? It can, it can, it can be a train out of control. Right? Yeah. That you've created. Well, it's and it's a tie down to what's your chain. Right. Because you're, you're chaining into different things. No so what, what you're you doing. You better so do what you want to do. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to want to wake up in the morning. You don't want to wake up and be like, shit, today. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> you know? I wake up, I jump out of bed, I pray on my knees, and then I, I go, man. I hit the coffee, it's going. I go to the gym. It's like, I'm excited. I've got my books lined up. I've got audio books. I'm in the sauna. I'm trying to write jokes. Like, I'm going to go fly. I'm like, we skydiving. <laughs> Fuck. The boat's got fuel because I ain't got no money. Right? That's the reality. <laughs> <laughs> Hold my vibe with your beer, but you know what? We're having a blast today and yeah. tomorrow and yesterday. You know, get the kids right along with me, stopping on. We're gonna fly eat some pizza. We don't know. Yeah. Go well, snorkeling. You know, money's <laughs> everywhere, and it and it yeah. likes that. Right. It likes that right. that it you're talking about. Right. So it's gonna find you. It, it you know. Kinda has but get yourself the in the right headspace for accepting it too, because right. if you if you want to yes. if yes. you have that mindset that you don't want to sell out, you know, right. you're blocking right. an opportunity for things to come in and you just do you and you're not even actually selling out. Right. And money's not evil. It, it's not it's evil. It's a tool. Yeah. And, and like it's a really nice tool to have. So man, and like, it's like, um, man, what you just don't care about it. I mean, that it's not bad. I mean, don't get me wrong. I had to get, I was very careless with my finances when I was younger and it, it wrecked my twenties and thirties. I've just crawled out of the hole. You know what I mean? Like, just, I was very careless with my student loans and, you know, very careless with my finances. So you do have to have an eye on them. But once you get the system worked out and you know your maxes and minimums and everything's covered, man, you live, even though we live out of our means a little bit, a lot, <laughs> we, we should not do everything we do. But it's it's kind of like, you enjoy, what's the point if you're not enjoying it? Like, Raul yeah. said it best. He's like, um, Austin, Texas is a, of course, the only Austin, is a work to live city. Other cities are live to work cities. Like if you're in Manhattan, you're living to work. You're up, you have to hustle, you're on the grind, you know, you're living to work. Here, we can't wait to get off work. <laughs> we're going outside, you know, we're going to the creeks and the hills and the lake and skydiving. And it, it's just, once you find your balance, I think is what I'm trying to get to, right? But you can. F- you can find your balance with a job you don't like. You just got to find something you enjoy about your job, 
right? And once you enjoy that, things will happen for you if you want it. You might not want it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, might that be cozy. Is, that, that was, and that was that rant for the day. <laughs> All right. So I want to talk about the Icaros. Okay. Icaros. Yeah. If we look at wh- how will we find it online? Um, it's it's spelled I C A R O S. I C A R O S. Yeah, it's this machine that is a flight simulator. That's a, a body reality. flight simulator. Yeah. Thing virtual yeah, reality. Yeah, but body so, so you had you had day you had business planned out an entire arcade around this and other VR experiences. Yeah, and it was. L- a lot of it was centered around this thing because yeah. it, and was it was kind very of experimental the cool at the time. One. Yeah, it was right. still in prototype-ish phase. Yeah, you found in it Germany. before yeah. it was even released. Yeah, they were. G- it was still prototype. They maybe sold a few. You know. Right, right, right. Um, but yeah, I was trying to get a plane ticket to Germany because I wanted to test it out so bad. Right, and the universe answers your prayers and gives you one. Yeah, a few years later, yeah, for getting you know, yeah, put it on, put it on the back burner, and it shows back up. So that's how it goes, lap. man. But um, things fall in your lap, and. Um, we got one at the tunnel to play with, and we I had it for a couple months all to myself downstairs, and I spent hours on this thing. No, I'm not kidding. I was playing with it. I did all the games that I was sick over and over again. This is cool. I did the Wonder Woman adventure on the Samsung goggles on the Icaros. Yeah, so you just fly. You can't control you can't, it. You're, you're just, just like, oh, something to sit baby. on while you're flying. And then two weeks ago, we went to Six Fly, uh, Fiesta, Texas, and actually rode that Wonder Woman roller coaster wow. that we, I did on the Icaros. So that was cool for me. I was like a little <laughs> geek moment. You know what I mean? Like yeah. reality and blah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Working on making dirty. better games for that thing. Because right now it's only a few and they're... They're, uh, they're, they're, they're fun. I mean, they're in their very... F- it's the very first thing with this but. thing, with this machine and the uh, the technology itself. So we're in baby, baby phases. So it um. So that's, that's the one with the underwater where you're driving the submarine and you're shooting. There's sh- one, shooting yeah. Sh- uh, subs and ships. It's the only one that gives me motion sickness. Man, that was. I never I get know. motion sickness, but that will. Hey, that was. F- Fun <laughs> until you I'm get so sick. I'm so happy for you. Yeah. <laughs> until you get sick. <laughs> yeah, uh, man, yeah. I was in there screaming, woo! Like, yeah. Like, like, yeah, it was fun. And then you take them off and you're like, oh, because I would do it, I do, I would do like an hour of VR. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and, no, I'd be <laughs> sick for the rest of the day. I really would be sick. I'm working with developers right now to make a better game for that. There's uh, a, there's a, there it was. That was the Icaros. It's um, so it's better than a plank. That's yeah, it's it like <laughs> it's better than a plank. They say. <laughs> so Look it's uh. That. You sit on it, and your points are your elbows and your knees, and you kind of use your core, but not. Really. You need your core. It's kind of a workout. It is fun. It yeah. is fun. There's no way around it. It's fun. Just on the commercial scale, I can see you needing a spotter on it or something. Oh, there's just no way. Uh, there's no way you can just pick up and go on that thing right where it is right now. Right. That's like an upside down photo. You got right. Yeah. Like what's going on there? I wish you could see it. Yeah. Um, so well how do you how do you feel about where VRs come? Where it's come from, you know, because you've been on it for how long? When did you start that idea? Um, well, I dropped the arcade bit um, because the expense and return was just not a good math equation yet. Okay. So, um, and then this thing just happened, so I'm working on developing a game for it that's a little bit better that might be more like Roller Coaster Tycoon style. Or nice. You know? Yeah. Uh, make nice. it more Minecraft accessible. And I have no forward. idea where it's gonna go. No idea. No plans there. That's just a play thing. That's fun. Yeah, there it is, right there. Yeah, and you just go big on it, man. Yeah, you yeah. can go big. On it. It's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like on that roller coaster ride when you dive forward, yo. Even Drew still was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, it's fun. You know. <laughs> yeah. We had a fan in front of us. It's that's retarded. Oh, I'm not, I'm not sorry to say that word, but that didn't work. That was, you know, that was just that was gimmicky. Well, I think we tried the all the gimmicks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you might as well try them while you're at it. Yeah. But I think as close as we get to the holodeck in Star Trek, then the better we are. So that's, I think that's where we're at right now. We're just trying to find little things to be more completely inside of whatever we're playing. Because I think that life is already kind of, you can see it as a simulation. It's already a game in, in some kind of way. Uh, so it's fun for us to play with this technology as a way to have a more instant power because, you know, the whole manifest and 
um, the spiritual aspect is just not as acceptable to the mass when it comes to instant creation of things if we are in a game. So if right. we can use video games as a means to play, then we can learn a lot faster. We can collaborate a lot more extreme in different ways. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely the virtual world. And like even even the daydreams we have, like Ready Player One and stuff like that, doesn't ever scratch the reality. You know what I mean? Just like... um just the possibilities of of that virtual world is limitless. Like your avatar is just like Ready Player One, but the learning that can happen will be instantaneous. Like we can be in a room with some scientists in Germany working on the same project, you right? Like now, and like holodeck style, but it's not like the, you know, the holodeck was just perfect. You walk in, computer, yeah. Yeah, you and know, it's, and it's Spain, an infinite amount of space. And right. you know. But, um, <laughs> but reality is are those haptic suits, the goggles, and the gloves, a yeah. and better routers. And, like, that is a holodeck-style platform. It's just it's not you walk in, but, damn it, you can sword fight on it. Yeah, but that's that's the direction. So we have to have, like, a target to aim for, right? Right. So that's well kind of coming. A, that's ideal. So I think everything right now is just getting closer to that target, but that's the end goal. I heard it on Joe Rogan. They were talking about maybe one day even having a podcast host where your your host, everybody's in virtual reality. They come to the virtual set. They yeah. come in avatar form. That's an excellent idea. Right? And you, you know? can look out Why over not? your audience of avatars and they see you in your avatar. Isn't that awesome? I mean, I love the future. I love where games are going. I, I'm with it. I'll take a chip. I'll tell you the truth. I don't believe in the mark of the beast. I believe let's open locks with uh, RFIDs and our fingertips. I'm down. Give me some magnets, son. I, like, I know it's real. I want a bionic eye. You <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I want better parts. <laughs> Are you kidding me? People get fake hearts and lungs. They're still alive. I mean, they're, uh, they're cyborgs, but they're still people. Well, you know, I was just, I was sitting cross-legged a little bit ago, and my mm -hmm. foot started going numb. I was like, damn. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <joint, laughs> <bionic. laughs> wouldn't have to go numb. <laughs> I wouldn't have to ever go numb again. Man. But but the problem with that right now is that I wouldn't be able to feel it if right. it were bionic. So well, man, I'm getting old <laughs> and like I don't want to feel some of this shit, son. Like I'm down with some new ankles and maybe a knee. Skateboarding was tough on me younger, yo. Like I broke shit. Good I problems. went for it, you know. Yeah, yeah. well, not they're not good now. The, yeah. the weather changes. Your boy's in pain, so. <laughs> Not cool. No, <laughs> it's still worth it. Yeah, know. it's still worth it. I ripped it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were good, too. I was okay for a you're, while. Yeah, you were on yeah. a magazine. Was, you are on was, some yeah, stuff. It was really cool, man. It was a crazy adventure. A crazy adventure. And it, um, the, the book I'm writing, uh, They Slew a Prophet, that's how it opens. Is it like, uh, talk about building launch ramps and stealing the wood from construction sites to build the ramps in the middle of the night. It was, you know. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Super. I need to read that because yeah. I'm working on building a half pipe in the garage right Are now. Are you? Yeah. Well, how, how, how high? About three uh, foot? Like a little one. Like yeah, three yeah. feet. Like a little yeah. micro. Zero by three. Cool. Yeah. Where, are you really? Yeah. I'd love to help you. I've built okay. so <laughs> many ramps. So many ramps. That's awesome. It needs to yeah. be portable. I want to be able to take it on a road trip if I need to. Oh, you oh, cause <laughs> not a full half pipe, just a quarter <laughs> pipe is what you're thinking. No, half. So you can go back and forth. You know? Oh, because you have the flat ground concrete. So you just yeah. can go two quarter pipes so and let it, it be. Right. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's 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 good. Uh, but here's the deal though. Like if you don't wait the the bottom part of the ramp oh yeah. when you go up, it oh kind of yeah. tilts. So we gotta we gotta. I used to have a skate park in my driveway growing up. So I just start. I just kept collecting more ramps and uh, yeah. I had a quarter pipe and learned that the hard way. So as the tip. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right. Yeah. Whoop. All right. alive. <laughs> yeah. Yo, we used to build massive ramps and but it's crazy design. We uh, it was just a two by four like this, like an L shape. And halfway down, there was a another two by four going like that. So it just went foop, foop, foop. <laughs> it was straight up, man. I used to get higher than the school bus in the morning. I'd see it coming, just wow. I'd be like looking at the driver right in the eyes, like what up? It was so awesome. We'd have <laughs> that's we'd a new kind of green. <laughs> yeah, bricks and planks of board and any poles and curb. We, we we used to steal like parking curbs and drive to drag them through the neighborhood. The cops would come, be like you guys are idiots. You can't, yeah, yeah, we were you can't dumb. do that. We were dumb kids, man. <laughs> I would have been right there with you. <laughs> yeah, you know? shredding. Yeah. skateboarding was life. Yeah, I was ro I was a rollerblader. I skateboarded and BMXed, yeah. but rollerblading yeah. was my thing. I loved inline. I skated right. vert. Really? Mm -hmm. You skated vert? Yeah. See, I, I skated vert on boards. I never did it on skates, yeah. man. I like just like to be in the air. I did gaps and vert, and I d was t awful at grinds. Really? Terrible. I think See? it was the balance. You know, I had uh, more weight on the front. So I love board yeah. slides, <laughs> no slides, grinds, steps. I used to love gaps. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the... the yeah, rollerblading, man. I just see your ankles cracking, son. Oh, no. 
Yeah, I, I never got hurt. Like, Re- not really. Did you know I never wheel? broke anything skating. I mean, I did crazy. I mean, you know, 10, 12. There was one 14-foot jump I did. Like really? Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. And I never, never got, I tried to backflip and, like, skimmed the, the one time I was wearing a helmet. Thank goodness. But I never wore helmets. It was so dumb. And skimmed the back of my helmet. And I was like, well, never doing a backflip. Better with that. Do you know Nick Riedel? Yeah. He's a professional rollerblader. Yeah, that's right. And he showed. Uh, we talked about that the very first time we met. Yeah. yeah I heard about he you. It's how we kind of got this cool his thing job. Because Chris Dixon was a rollerblader. So oh they, they hit right. it off. And that. like that's how Nick got in there. That's nuts, man. So BMX, did you race? Like no. Dirt? No, it was freestyle uh, park. Park. Okay. Yeah. See, yeah, you're younger than me. We I did a lot of just surfing. We surfing the bowl. I didn't do there. many cool things. I was just having fun. I grew up in the desert with dirt. So we had shovels. We would just build just build racetracks it was awesome i raced in the aba uh, american bicycle association or yeah. something um out in chandler arizona we'd go out to the chandler tracks they were badass it was the best going to the races we rode our bikes out to the races and that was from mesa to chandler's like riding from round rock to south austin maybe wow and then racing and then riding our bikes back That's i don't think we made it like somebody called their awesome. parents and we had to get a ride like halfway back we <laughs> were done <laughs> Yeah, that was awesome. So, free. So you you have part. You grew up in Austin. I grew up in East Texas, in hey, White House, Texas. Oh yeah, I read that. White House, Texas. Yeah, White House. White House. <laughs> <laughs> that next to Niggerhead Ranch. Uh, real close. Real <laughs> right, right, right around the corner. Right, uh, Rick Perry. So uh, <laughs> shout out Rick Perry. <laughs> yeah, shout out Rick. <laughs> um, Tyler, Texas <laughs> is it's about maybe ten minutes down the road. Okay. Of uh, Rose Capital of the World. So yeah, if you, you Google the, the Rose Capital of the World, Tyler, Texas comes up. But so you're from the White House. So yeah, White House Wildcats. What was it like? What was it like growing up um, as a Wildcat? A fairly, fairly small town. Um, I just knew I wanted to be in a city because I had watched movies and knew that it existed, and that's where I wanted to be. How many? <laughs> 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 so uh, how many people in your town? Oh, there was about f- three to five thousand. Wow. Yeah, it was a pretty small town. Every the majority of the town uh, is there to be in the school system because it's the f- one of the best school systems oh, in, okay. in East Texas. So, it's like an education so it was town. so my school. I graduated with about four hundred. Mm-hmm. I started kindergarten, graduated White House, Texas. Nice. And uh, yeah, about four hundred in my class. So in a town that was not that many people, almost all of them were in the school. Like it was almost right. all kids. Wow. Um, but it was it was an awesome little town to grow up in. And Tyler oh, that sounds dope. Hold on, it's a town of kids because they're all for school. So it's like everybody there. A lot. I mean, pretty you, much. You definitely have a collective. It's a lot of right. cowboy boots and what are they? Uh, yeah, and right. Air Apostle shirts. <laughs> so what'd you do as a kid for fun in White House? I was on wheels or running around in the woods. Uh, my Ooh. house is at a dead end next to a woods, and nice. we had trails in there and ropes Perfect. swinging around. I just was awesome. frolicking Living until I was frolicking. Yeah. I grew up on a lake until I was six, okay. and th- it was at a peninsula in Lake Tyler, in White House. Awesome. And oh, that's beautiful. All though. my friends were a group of five dogs. There, some oh. of them were stray, some of them had right. homes, but we hung out all right. day every day. And right. that's what I did until age six, and we moved. And then I had a couple friends, but not really. I mean, those were my that was right. my family. That was your family. You left them in, in White House. Dogs. Yeah, I mean, until we six, we you were raised by a pack of dogs. <laughs> And then got a like a redneck Tarzan. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No shit. (laughs) No shit. (laughs) (laughs) Then just got on wheels. I wanted to. I wanted to be a race car driver. Mm -hmm. um, But my parents didn't want to get a race car. Mm. So. Oh, damn. You know, I was doing what I can. So, so skateboarding and then rollerblading. And then the first time I ever saw a skate park, I was it changed my life. I was just in love. I remember walking in, I think I was 10 or 11 years old, mm-hmm. and I'm just walking in the room because it was an indoor park inside. Right. It was called the Tyler Skateplex. It was the largest skating rink in the United States. Oh, wow. Huge skating there? rink. No, it's not. Now it's like a workout facility of some kind. Oh. It's quite, it's, I don't want to talk about it. CrossFit. It's a very sad story. CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just, it's hard to make money be in a skate park and a skating rink apparently especially when there's free ones outside yeah yeah and that's the thing uh but it was awesome it was awesome having an indoor skate park but i saw it and my eyes just glazed over and i was done i was done i never wanted to leave so that was the majority of my childhood and then i got a hold of a camera and started making skate videos and that got me into film yeah nice nice i helped a buddy build an indoor skate park in oklahoma we'll just help him with a couple ramps and you don't want to leave no. Ever. It's heaven. And but <laughs> so like 
I had always I always skate and I always rode BMX on dirt, but I never really really rode a bike in a park, right? And we were building this indoor park, and there was wood everywhere, like chips and nails and not nails, but like there was stuff on the floor. So you're riding, you're gonna hit on a skateboard, right? Like yeah. and fall. No, no, yeah, you're. So I was like, ho- ho- was like, try the bike. Right. I was like, ah, you know, it's not as cool as dirt. You know, that's kind of like, you know, to have my attitude, mm-hmm. right? Man, that shit is fun. That shit is fun. Riding a bike, park, park bike, like a BMX park bike yeah. with a small sprocket, you know, yeah, so you right. can just roll. Yes, shit. Me. That is a huge workout. That is cardio out oh of yeah. the ass. Oh, yeah. Like, I, you almost want to fall over and die after a run or two. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it is fun. That's why I like going with a buddy because I have to spend as much time just chilling. Yeah, <laughs> you do. <laughs> so I've got a park bike given to me by um, Bueller. What up, Bueller? Shout out to Bueller. Yeah, um, I need to. Man, you have a park bike? Yeah. Do you still have one? Yeah, it's been hanging in my garage right now. There's that park in Pflugerville that is bad. Have you seen it? Uh, I haven't been. Oh, can we pull up that Pflugerville bike park? That would be so. I think dope. I yeah I have seen the I've the seen the image. Let's the look at that. Let's look at yeah. it. Yeah, looks amazing. It's huge. Well, I have an SUV now, so I can actually take my bike places. And you don't have the zipper. Hyundai no more. No. Nope. The Velocity. No, nope, I was ready for a road trip car. And what'd you get? Uh, my mom's Tucson. <laughs> it's no. a Hyundai Hyundai Tucson. Tucson, I've got one. I love my Tucson. Do you really? Yeah, my little red Tucson. Oh wow. My little maroon Tucson. I drive. Whoa. So I like skydive. I just got to throw gear in the back and go because I can't fit I it. I know that was car. a Tucson. That was a good one. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. Just drove to Michigan and back in that. Yeah. yeah. It's Looking awesome. Yeah, no trouble at all. No, so you can lay a bed down on the back of that. Yeah. You know, with that, 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 little, that little Veloster before, so it's nice. But I can fit yeah, things. So there's that park, man. So, like, my Tucson's right through the bikes. You know what I mean? If we're going to go, like, ride or something or throw the kayaks on top, I love it. Dude, that's like a little beat up truck. Could take, take it over a curb, you know. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, through a field, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Go mud and roll around. Well, shit, Allie. Um, how do people find you? Uh, For your life coaching, sh- hypnotherapy <laughs> skills? <laughs> Officially retired uh, right from on. hypnotherapy. I'm not doing that anymore. Um, I'm still doing coaching on the side and working with artists uh, specifically. So Anybody who artist? wants to create. But um, you can always find me at sooth.com, S E W T H. So it's okay. Soothsayer with, with the E W. She's for real, you guys. Um, and from there, you can find any active links. Cause I'm always changing up. Right now, I'm uh, just doing Instagram and Twitter is my quote collection space. So right I have hardly any followers because it's just for me. You know? <laughs> 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 well, hopefully, we get you some followers now uh, out of the three people that might yeah. watch this, including. Yeah. If it's my life. kids. Otherwise, it's just for me. <laughs> <And then laughs> well, this is probably just for us. We don't know where anybody's <laughs> yeah. going to. And then Soothsayer on Instagram. Right on. Uh, right on. Well, thank you for coming on, my love. Hey, thank you. I look forward future. to having you on. Uh, Wazzy Circus. WazzyCircus.com. Learn to skydive. Austin.com. Thank you guys for checking us out. Are we good to go? All right. And love Jackie you guys. says yes. Yeah, let's go.